And hello, welcome to this week's edition of Tick Adventures. I'm Aaron Young, your host today. We've got one of Australia's most successful and also passionate entrepreneurs joining us every episode live from Sydney, giving us some great advice to someone who wants to give it a go or is certainly on the way to do that. We're talking about Fred Chivester, of course, the founder of Finder.com, joins us now live from Sydney. How are you doing? Hey, guys. What's going on? Yeah, well, absolutely love talking to you, of course. So much to get through um, with these sorts of shows where you give your advice to people um, who I guess, you know, find themselves on that journey of entrepreneur and just really need a helping hand. And I think we all do from time to time. So today we're talking about, you know, powering your own house. Ross Sharman is a man we're talking about. He founded Accuracy 10 years ago. It's a B2B data services company providing insights to lenders, household energy consumption as well, helping customers to reduce uh, the impact of energy and also saving money. So let's bring him in right now from the Central Coast, just uh, north of Gosford, I understand. Ross, how are you doing? Good morning. Nice to be see you both. <laughs> Absolutely. So Ross Sharman, the founder and CEO of Accuracy. Um, let's talk, if we can start off with, Ross, just give us a spiel. Give us the pitch. What do you do? Yeah. So what we're doing, so the energy paradigm is changing um, mm. and going from the coal power station to people generating more in their home and getting ready for an electric vehicle. That's a consumer journey that people don't really navigate very well and solar still perplexes most people. Um, so what we're doing is trying to make it easy and we're doing that through banks. Banks will finance the journey for consumers and um, we provide data services and insights to help the consumer go on the journey in a B2B manner through the bank or financial institution. Certainly the topic du jour at the moment, isn't it, Fred? We hear, um, you know, everyone wants to help save the environment at the moment. It's been so political for the past decade as well, um, which must be, I'd imagine, quite fun at times. Ross kind of navigating your way through all that at the moment, kind of like dealing between lockdowns. Uh, Fred, your thoughts? Yeah, I think you, Ross, you're on a global mega trend. you know, <laughs> um, electric vehicles, solar power, um, putting satellites around the earth. Um, you know, it's on. I think you're right in there. Yeah, very much so. Um, so, We're Ross, give us a... Door for a long time, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, give us an idea about the investment. So you're talking about banks. Um, give us an idea yeah. about, you know, where you're at in terms of investment. Are you seeking investment? Do you know when the right time is? Yeah, well, so, I mean, we bootstrapped to date uh, with very little angel in investment to help us go. It's largely about you know, testing our business model. And we've had to iterate our business model over a number of years. And, you know, we, we started out doing bill comparisons and now that bill comparison now changes to moving to greener plans, um, to placing solar on roofs, um, you know, uh, digitally. Um, so we've we've been in the whole energy space and, and carbon space for a number of years and it's been hard, but as uh, Fred rightly said, it's a part of a mega trend now. So I think we're in the right place. and. We're now looking to expand the business. Um, so we're a team of 14 based in Sydney, um, but we have numerous opportunities within Australia and now outside Australia. So we are looking for our first major capital raise now. Awesome, Fred, over to you. Yeah, so I guess um, Ross, keen to understand what, what's sort of your biggest challenge right now? How can I help you? <laughs> We could work with Finder, but I think the um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the biggest uh, opportunity. Well, I mean, so we we need to be able to service. So we're working with um, a couple of major banks. That's very very resource heavy in terms of investment of time, um, yeah. and to be able to perform to the standards and to be able to jump when they say jump is is quite constrained. So gosh, that is you know, such a great point. I think any finder founder, I'm, I'm so confused now finder and founder. Thanks for that, Fred. But um, so many founders, so many entrepreneurs find themselves just in that you've got finite time, right? And also finite energy. And do you spend it trying to make the product better? So hopefully, you know, girls chase you as opposed to you doing the chasing, if you will. Um, or do you spend time trying to get in front of investors? Do you spend time trying to get in front of banks and things like that. Fred, what, what's your advice in that regard? Because I think everyone in those, you know, first kind of five years or so, we all want that investment, but trying to a, choose the person or the people to get in front of, and it could be banks as well. And then the process, the IMs, everyone needs, wants something different. Um, it can ruin your confidence in what you've got as well. 
What's your advice? Yeah, I think, um, Ross, that's a, an age-old challenge. You know, I think it comes down to the same one of, you know, capital allocation, which is essentially your time and your, your team's time. And that's that's going to be a problem forever, which I'm sure you know, um, yeah. after, after doing this for 10 years. Um, I think the, the, the ultimate place to get to is when your product um, has kind of gone through a certain phase and you're not really having to prove to investors the the actual concept it's it's almost you know they understand without having to explain it a lot and the, that that's a beautiful place to be because then you're not spending your time and you're pitching talking about um you know will this work and you know what's the opportunity um instead i think you know the, the addressable market you're in is you know, people understand that. I think it's a mega trend. I think the key is, but once you, I'd, I'd actually preference a little bit more towards focusing on that product right now so that when you go to the investor, they're asking you, you know, if that makes sense, because that's a much easier place to be and you're going to get a better deal ultimately. Yeah. Um, because they're, they're, you know, there's a little bit of traffic to get in. Uh, everyone's going to want a piece of accuracy. Yeah, so this is exactly what we're talking about, about, Girls chase you when you, you know, not when you say you're about to go to the gym, but when you've been going to the gym and getting fit, right? So um, the idea of that, do you work on the business or in the business? So what you're essentially saying, Fred, is when you get to that sweet spot that you've fixed most of the, the problems in your business, you've worked out who you are, what your commercial proposition is, you've got a great list of customers who are regular customers, everyone knows what they're doing in the business, you've got people under you who are doing the job, that's when you then find the time to be able to get in front of those investors. Yeah, I think another thing, um, so what we're talking about here is operational excellence. And Michael Porter writes a lot about this. Um, he's a great strategist. Operational excellence isn't actually a, a business strategy in and of itself. Um, unfortunately, like you, everyone can operate with excellence. It's, it's not actually a defensible place, but getting there with more speed than someone else is a strategy. So if you can, you know, if you've got this new model and you can execute faster and operate better than other people, then that is a strategy and that is something to take advantage of. And it's probably a key moment to take, you know, make hay while the sun's shining. Mm. Uh, then the, the next phase is really, you know, how do you defend where you are? And that's probably where an investor is going to ask, you know, what's your defensibility? What's the, um, you know, What's the, what's the moats that you've created in order to, and the barriers to entry. And you've probably taken, and you've seen those squares along the way, but right now, you know, it's just about, I remember the, the time I, the, the, the Microsoft CEO in Australia told me when they were selling Windows 95, literally himself and all the senior management team just went down to the mailroom and was stuffing CDs in boxes <laughs> because they just couldn't get it out the door fast enough. Wow. Yeah. That is a great problem to have, right? And I think it's... um. It's about the sizzle that you can have to your business as well, which is going to attract people when you're in something, you know, for, for me, it's news. Um, and obviously news is a commodity for a lot of people. So it's what you're adding onto your product that can, um, you know, attract those investors. I know the other thing for you as well, Ross, you're looking at essentially taking the service outside of Australia and that concern about, you know, the resources, the people growing it as well. Do you keep bootstrapping? Do you, you know, the profit that you might have, maybe a third um, each month compared to your revenue? Do you pump that in or do you take some out to say, thanks to yourself, um, talk to us about, you know, your issues there with the idea of bootstrapping versus taking on investors and then Fred will get your advice. Yeah, no, 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 good question. I think, um, you know, Fred, you covered some excellent topics there and I think our challenge to date is, so we've been, we've, we also do work with governments and governments, again, like financial institutions can be quite draining and you <laughs> tend to get client led rather than product led when you're working yeah. with those big beasts and i think that's why we haven't quite got ahead but the market also hasn't quite been ready for what we we see as the future um, but now we really need to be churning out new data insights and new products at a rapid rate to build that defensibility that, that fred mentioned there that's 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 our view on how we we do protect our business model is, is keep innovating and um, staying three steps ahead of anyone else in the market. So um, maybe if we just put, put that to Fred and then I can talk about 
where we see ourselves growing outside Australia. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you're in an emerging market and, and um, you know, I think, I think there's um, a time for consolidation and stability. And what I think you're, you're, I think your strategy is good. You know, you need to take share and you need to take um, key strategic squares and keep pushing faster um, than other people. That's a competitive advantage. And that's something to master and, you know, like going back over your existing business and then reinventing it is hard, you know, and if you can build excellence around that, I think it's, it, that's, that's a great thing to do during a real growth market where, where technology is changing, you know, silicon's getting better, um, the, 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 the panels are getting better, the efficiency, uh, the batteries, the pricing, manufacturing, logistics, um, uh, the, 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 the placement of the panels, you know, all those, the, the, these are all, you know, factors which make it a better and better, better service. And I'm sure you're, you're, you see all those levers. I, I think you're in that phase and that's yeah. strategically a great place to be in. So let's talk about the overseas stuff, if we can, Fred, um, and the idea of, you know, getting ready for that. And, and the key question, I think, in all of this, you know, capital raising, is it ever too early? Is it a bad thing to get in early? Uh, when you're planning your first capital raise, should you be thinking about your next? How much equity should you be thinking of giving away, et cetera? Talk to us about that. Yeah, I think, you know, broadening to other countries, um, what, you know, Finder spent a good amount of time, maybe probably seven years before it did anything overseas. And I know that sounds kind of slow, maybe. Um, but, you know, it takes time to, you know, again, get that operational excellence. Um, and I think that's fine. It's okay. We're, we're comfortable like that. And what it obviously enabled us to do is just be in a different position um, from a capital perspective. Um, Can I just to, jump in and ask you Ross, know, though? You, you've been using that term. I really love that term, operational excellence. Ross, do you feel like your business at the moment has, has achieved what you would feel comfortable with calling operational excellence? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. It was something we identified probably about 18 months ago. Um, when I was too deeply in the business from an operational yeah. perspective. And um, so a few months ago, I brought in a new chief operating officer, um, but included, we've also done some ISO accreditation around data security. Um, we, we've kind of grown up as a business and I've brought in a lot of outside help to, to bolster the team. So I do feel that we, and we've also rewritten a lot of our core technology as well. So it's super scalable now. Yeah, so, um, all right. so, so you we, get to that point where you feel like you're at operational excellence um, you know, and Fred mentioned seven years. Don't know if that's too early, too late. Depends on the business, depends on also your energy levels as well to go, all right, let's take this. Because so many businesses expand or expand too quickly and they don't put the love and the energy that every tiny minute detail of that business requires, right? And then it just kind of yeah. falls over or you get bored or there's problems back in the mainland and you have to get back there, et cetera. So Fred, um, you know, just, I guess, finishing up, we've only got a minute or so left. Talking about that raising capital too early, do you think it's a bad thing? You know, I think it's, yeah, too early, too late. That's a tough one. Um, you know, I think um, you always want to be, you know, pitching your business and, and, and I think that's important. But there's a moment in time when you're hot. You know, you're in the sector, you're in the right place, right time. And that's normally a great time just to go for it. Yeah. Um, that's my. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel, guess it's when you don't need the, the money as well, market. isn't it, right? And when the markets are hot, like at the moment, where crazy things are happening, where, you know, if I was you, I'd get on Reddit and start telling people how good your service is and you're doing great. But I mean, that's we, we live in these crazy times when it comes to um, economics, when it comes to, I mean, everything, the amount of money which is being stimulated in the economy as well particularly in areas like you're doing at the moment as well. Ross, um, I know that we probably would love to speak for so much longer, but we've got to leave it there. Really appreciate your time. Congratulations. We'll be watching to see what you come up with. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you both. Absolutely. Fred, always love your advice. Of course, we'll see you again next week. Back with Adrian Franklin at Tick Adventures. Have a great week. Thank you. All right, and that is the program for today. Thank you so much. You can catch it on the app anytime. Search for Ticker News or Ticker TV as well on wherever you get your apps from. I'm Aaron Young. Hope to see you soon.